What's up guys, it's John here, and on this video, I'm gonna show you how I make 10,000 pound, which is just under $13,000 every single month from running a small publishing business. Not just that, I'm gonna share my journey on how I started making money online. If that's something that sounds interesting to you, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that little notification bell so you can get notified every time I release a new video. And I nearly forgot, don't forget to smash that like button as it really does help out and does help spread the word about my channel. If you're new here, my name is John, and on this channel I talk about online business, such as publishing content websites, Amazon FBA, drop shipping, and other money-related subjects which I find interesting, and which I wish I had knew when I first got started out making money online. Now, some of you are probably thinking, who is this person, and why should I be listening to him, and where is the proof that he can even do what he says? Well. I'm going to quickly go to my computer. I don't usually show earnings, but for the case of this video, I will show some earnings proof, as I do know some people do lie and make up screenshots. So I'm going to go to my computer. I'll quickly show you a few earnings. Before I do, I'll just explain what the earnings are for. So at the moment, what I'm heavily involved in is content websites. And on them content websites, I publish informational articles, review roundups guides where we might look at five of the top selling products within a certain category, compare them against each other, put the stats there in a table and we, we, we'll read hundreds of reviews on Amazon and other websites and just try and work out which one is the best for a certain situation or a certain person. And then what we do is with the review roundups, the products that we recommend buying we will then, if they have an, something called an affiliate program, we'll then link to the retailer who sells that product. And if someone goes from our website to their website, then buys the product which we've recommended, we then earn a small commission, a small kickback if you like, to say thank you for referring the customer. We also do informational content, how-to guides, them sort of guides where we don't really promote products. We will then use banner advertising uh, adverts, you know the sorts, the, the ones that, that, that follow you around on the internet when you've been looking at a website or looked at a product somewhere. So our main way of monetizing content sites is through affiliate marketing where we get small commissions for referring sales to retailers and we earn money through uh, advertising on the sites. Everyone buys on Amazon. It has a large market share and what, what a lot of people don't know is it has something called the Amazon Associates Programme where if you have a website where you promote products, you can promote their products, and if people buy from you, they would then pay you a small commission for referring that sale to them. So on the screen right here, you can see that, I will refresh this, so the 1st to the 31st of March, we'll do March because it's already up, we're looking at it earlier. So I'll apply that. You can see that we've made just over seven and a half thousand pounds in commissions. Now, seven and a half thousand pounds for those of you in the United States is about 9,800 US dollars. So that's an example of if we had done roundup reviews, then seven and a half thousand pounds is the, the commissions paid to me for referring those sales from my website. I'll also show some earnings from having banner advertising on a site. So uh, this is a network I use, uh, Mediavine it's called. So they will put ads on your site and you will split a share of the revenue. I can't remember the exact share, but uh, the share which I'll show on the screen is the money I get. They've already took their percentage out. So as you can see, for May, so I'll go back, I'll show you that this is a uh, May, May, refresh it. So in May it was, $1,855. Now, this network uses US dollars, whereas Amazon Associates, I've just shown you a second ago, is in Great British Pounds. So US dollars, so for those of you in the UK, that revenue is around 1,400 pounds. So that's from having banner ads on the site. So when someone goes to one of my informational contents, they go on to Google, they search, how do I do X? My website should rank, hopefully, and if they go to my page and click on one of them ads, then you earn a tiny bit of revenue. 
So as you can see, we've done 263,000 sessions and we've earned $1,855. Now I'll just do one more for you. So I use a network called AWIN. And AWIN is like the Amazon Associates program, but it has a lot of companies uh, within it. So, and some companies go to a network who run it for them. So they organize it, they create the links for them. They, they, it's just an easy way for the companies to get into promoting with affiliates. So either impressions for how many times the links have shown is 322,000 times. You can see that we've referred 3,860 pound in sales to the retailer and the retailer in this case has paid me 312 pound in June for referring those customers to their website. So uh, back to my journey. So it all started in around 2003, 2005, roughly around 15 years ago, where I started selling uh, mini dirt bikes. Now, these mini dirt bikes at the time, did created quite, quite a craze. And if you're as old as, as me, you, uh, you will, you'll probably remember this craze, because it also hit the headlines on the news sometimes for, for all the wrong reasons, really. Uh, some people were causing a bit of a nuisance on the road with these mini dirt bikes, but that's another story. So uh, back in the day, so I noticed they were selling well on e eBay, and uh, so I decided to see if I could source these mini dirt bikes and see if we could if if we could buy them and resell them on eBay. Now at the time, I noticed there was a company that was on eBay who were selling these mini dirt bikes in lots of fives, tens, fifteens. So and they're on auction, so so you could bid them. So at the time, I could bid on the auctions. And I could usually win them between 100 and 150 pound a bike. But remember that these are in lots of five, tens and fifteens. And then I brought these bikes in and then I took, I took my own pictures. I got pictures of them. I put them back on eBay in uh, single bikes and they started selling. I could sell them for between 200 to 250. And you could make between like 50, 100, 150 pound depending because the, the prices range quite a bit. So the, the profits did, you know, they did go up and down, but but you could sell these bikes for fun. So at the time, I kept buying these lots off eBay, I kept watching for these auctions. This company, wholesaler, was putting on for these lots of five, 10, 15s of these mini, uh, mini dirt bike lots. And then eventually I decided to see if I could buy direct from the supplier instead. So I contacted them, sold them. I was the one who'd been buying a lot of the rush ones, and they agreed that yeah it's not a problem you could buy that direct from us don't need to go through ebay so they saved on their fees i could just ring up and get them and not have to worry about not winning winning the auction so in the end i could buy direct i'd have them delivered i'll take my pictures they would be listed and i could sell them i would have a, a carrier at the time I used to use tnt or parcel force I used to come collect them and then they used to deliver them to the customer and I did the same thing. I bought 15, they came in, I sold them, went down to the last few, I'd order another 15, bring them in, and uh, and it just continued. And at the time, I made some decent money uh, doing this. And I was looking for a place to, I was only selling so many dirt bikes, so I had money, so I thought, what, can I, what else can I buy to make some money? So th this took me to uh, Radio Control Toys. Back to eBay, I'd noticed the radio controlled toys, boats, cars, helicopters, tanks, they were selling really well, but there were no one on eBay uh, selling them in lots of 5, 10s, 15s as wholesale lots. So I decided, I got on Google, did some searches, and found out that uh, in most parts of the UK, there was, there was distributors or wholesalers who sold these uh, more control cars, tanks, helicopters, and uh, so I decided I went down to their warehouse and they had uh, showrooms where they displayed all the more control stuff they sold and I started buying lots from them. Now at the time, my dad owned a garden centre, so I just uh, borrowed his uh, van because in the end I was buying quite a lot of them. So I'd go down and I'd buy like 10, 15 of each model. So I might have five helicopters, five types of tanks, five types of planes, five types of cars, and I'd go down, I'd buy them, I'd bring them back, 
I would then take pictures. I bought this uh, light cube at the time where it lit up, you'd get some really good pictures with a, a, a digital camera. It'd be even easier now because you just use your iPhone or your Android phone, smartphone. But back then I had a, a little digital camera, nothing expensive. Took pictures of these uh, more control toys, lifted them on eBay and on Amazon too at this point. And they were, pop they were really popular on there, but they were popular on eBay as well. So now I had two places I could sell these more control toys on Amazon and, and eBay. So I was uh, selling these more control toys. They were doing really well. It was a really exciting time. There was more money coming in. So it was the same again. It was like, I think I might have finished with the more control motorbikes by then because I think there were that much competition. I think the profits within them had been the, the shrunk to a point where it weren't really worth buying them wholesale and selling them retailer because I think the wholesalers had started selling them themselves singly as well, so they could just they could just undercut everyone. So I think I stopped at the bikes. Uh, as, a, as a note though, I was, I was just looking recently, and I actually think that now you, you, you could buy uh, mini dirt bikes in lots wholesale, and you could sell them again and make a different profit. And uh, a lot of these are wholesalers who sell these mini dirt bikes still, they, they actually offer a drip shopping service where you can sell them and they will send them out for you so you don't even have to hold the stock but uh, I'll get on to dropshipping in a little bit when I finish with this this uh, story because there's a bit more to it and I think you'll find it interesting to wear the rest of it. So uh, let's get uh, back to that. So next I decided I was going to move into selling gifts and uh, gadgets. Now at the time I, I couldn't really find any suppliers on eBay to buy lots of anything like that. But I did know in Birmingham there was an expedition at a place called the NEC. And basically what it is, is there was around 500 stands. So there was about 500 different uh, companies who sold gifts, more control stuff, toys. So when I was at this show, I managed to find about eight suppliers of uh, gifts, jigsaws, toys, all sorts of stuff, stuff I'd never seen before. And I don't even remember, but like a big, a big uh, thing at Christmas type of game was one that give you a shock. So you, it was like a quiz game, and there were different versions of it in the end where you uh, did the quiz. But if you got it wrong, it gives you a shock on your hand. And uh, games like that, and puzzles where they were nearly impossible to uh, put together or take apart. And I also got into uh, the more control craze was also starting at this point with uh, mini helicopters, uh, if people remember them. When they first come out, they were a big hit and I got in just in time on them. They, they were just starting to come about where everyone was getting excited about these little more control helicopters you could buy that were, that were at the, cause at the time, more control stuff was, it was either fairly large or it just weren't very good. But but these these mini helicopters, you could spin them around, forwards, backwards, and, and they weren't that much either. You could, uh, so you could buy them at around 15 and then you, you could resell them at around 30. Now, I soon learned that within the gifts and toys and these, generally like you could double your money. So something that cost you 10, you could sell for 20. Something that cost you 20, you could sell for 40. And even as a fact that some real expensive gifts that would cost 50, they'd easily sell for 100. Uh, an example of this was the when uh, star projectors used to project stars onto the ceiling at night on the floor, well them at the time, they were like 70 quid, but you, you could sell them for 140, 150 quid. Anyway, back to the expedition. Well, while I was at the expedition, I found about eight new suppliers, something like that. Then I got the supplier's details, got the brochures, the, what uh, products they sold. Then at the same time, I decided I couldn't do it from home anymore, so I'd need a unit to at least store the stock. So where I live in Manchester, I managed to get a smaller uh, unit. So then, once the product started coming in, I could store them in the unit at home in my office, in a home office like where I'm filming this now. I could print off the invoices, answer any email queries, list stuff, put stuff on Amazon, put stuff on eBay, and then I, I'd go to the unit in the afternoon. I would wrap everything I had sold. I would then uh, leave it to be uh, picked up by Royal Mail or Parcel Force, TNT, whoever the carrier I was using at the time, used a few of them. They would come, collect the parcel, take them to customers. I would then go home and well list new products, look for new products, deal with the website, customer services, uh, emails, phone calls, 
Stuff like that, right? Really. Did that for a good four or five years, something like that, and made some really good uh, money out of it. So, back to the store, I turned out a battery on my phone, which is unfortunate. This, this shows how inexperienced I am doing video because, well, I don't do video very often. So, I was in the uh, gadgets uh, and gifts space and was doing pretty well, but even that after a time, it become the profit margins were were shrinking. It was getting to a point where it wasn't really worth it. It was it was it was getting. I mean, you could still make decent money, but it was getting more difficult, more competitive. So I decided, wonder if we should go into something else. So I sold off the website. I sold off the stock, got the money back I had, and then decided we're going something going to something new. Now at the time, my mom and dad owned a garden centre, a small local one and uh, decided that I would have a look if there was something within that which I could do online. Because the thing is, it's always been, see what you can do online, because at the end of the day, what you really want is the freedom and the ability to to scale a business. Now, on the internet, most things are scalable to an extent, and some companies can go as large as you want, as large as you're capable of taking it. So decided I'll try gardening. Now I looked on eBay, on Amazon and on the internet in general and there was a lot of sales going on for plants. But the plants which my mum and dad sold at their garden centre, they were quite they were quite big. They were uh, like you'd see in, in a garden centre if you go to a garden centre now they they've been two litre, three litre pots. What I needed were small pots because these pots they were uh, you you could you could pack them up a lot easier. They would be less likely to get broken in the post. And so we went down that route. We had custom packaging, cardboard packaging. We had blister packs where you could put the plant into the blister pack, fasten it up. Blister pack is in plastic. Fasten it up, put a cardboard sleeve over and a bit of tape around and that go out in the post. Very rarely it had any damage returns and it worked great and plants are, plants are fairly flexible anyway so they could take a bit of giving in the post so we did that now at the time we also sold uh, products such as uh, garden tools and equipment and we used to post these out ourselves and and uh, we kept getting these emails at the time from Amazon promoting this uh, Amazon FBA they call it and what it is it is uh, fulfilled by Amazon so you send your products to Amazon, they would pack them, they would wrap them, and then they would send them out to the customer for you. So you don't deal with any of the logistics of having to store the product, or certainly not store it at all. You might store a bit of it before you send it to Amazon, but they would store the products, they would pick it, they would wrap it, and they would send it out. And the thing about this was, when we really looked into it, it was as cheap to have them store it and send it than it was for us to post it out because because Amazon was such a big company, they got such good rates on posting with the local carriers, Royal Mail, Parcel Force, that they could get such good deals that even if we posted ourselves, because we couldn't get the same rates as Amazon, then they could, they could pack it, store it, and send it out for the same cost it would cost you just to send this uh, plant out, or well, not plant, it was garden products at the time. So we could send out these uh, garden, uh, products it was just, just it was a no-brainer really sent it to amazon so we uh, we started doing this we sent all garden products to amazon they sent and stored them and sent them out we did their plants because we had greenhouses anyway so we, we stored the plants in greenhouses and we packed them wrapped them looked after them sent them out to the customer if they ever bought plants and a physical product we always used to hold a few garden products on site so we could put them with the plant and send them out together customers who just ordered garden tools for example they just go straight from Amazon we just click Amazon send bump gone we used a uh, used a software called Limworks that used to sync stock with Amazon our stock we held ourselves so if we only had a certain amount of stock it would show say there's only 10 it, we used a software called Limworks that would say 10 in total and it show 10 available on Amazon 10 available on eBay 10 available on your website and if we sold one on eBay, it would the software would then know and it would say, right, nine available on eBay, nine on Amazon, nine on the website. So it would stop you from overselling stock. Again, getting a bit off the story here, but that's just a bit about some of the software we used. Then 
after a bit, decided that I will try and build a, a website that has how-to guides within the gardening industry because I knew a bit, I knew quite a bit about gardening. So I created a website with how-to guides. I did product reviews and we did informational type content. So we might do top 10 plants for this. We might do best lawn mower. We might do how to prune X plant, how to lay a lawn, just different subjects. So we started this in about 2016. Now, what I didn't realize at the time, this, this is known as a content site or it might be an authority site or a niche site, but didn't realize this at the time that this is what I had started to build. But we started to build it. Weren't sure how I was going to monetize it. Although I had a few ideas of uh, how it would work because I'd seen other similar websites because obviously I've got an idea from somewhere. And and uh, the way it went, the way it went down was I started this site and for 12 months, not much happened, but I sort of knew it was possible. So I just kept going, publishing more content, publishing more content. In the beginning, all this content was written by me and I'm not a great writer by any means. Some might actually call my writing is uh, terrible, but kept publishing this content, kept doing reviews, kept doing how-to guides, and and this went on for about twelve months. And then when traffic built up, decided it was time to try and see see what money we could make out of it. So then I looked at what is now called affiliate marketing. So the products I was already promoting, I could now link to the retailer or to Amazon. I could link to other re uh, retailers. Uh, some of them might be like G Tech. A lot of people might know. Thomson Morgan is a gardening company. Uh, Crocus is another gardening company that focuses on plants. Uh, even affiliate market for like B and Q. Things like that. So then, if someone read one of my reviews where I talked and about the pros and cons of certain products and which ones I considered were the best for certain situations. If someone went on that, then clicked on the link to go and see where they could buy it, they would lend up on Amazon, somewhere like that. And then if they bought that product on Amazon, Amazon would then give me a small commission uh, between like five and 10%. So if, if they bought something for say 10 pound, it might make between 50p and 80p. But which may sound small, but with enough traffic, you can earn relatively decent money from this, which I did show a quick screenshot and start the video of uh, some of the earnings from the Amazon Associates Network. But another way to do this was when you were promoting items like lawnmowers, scarifiers, strimmers, these are expensive items. So if I could sell something for £100, I might make £8. If I could sell something for £200, I might make £16. And you get how it works, the more expensive it was, commissions are still five to eight percent uh, on Amazon at a time I'm recording this it's actually seven percent and if you do over forty thousand pound worth of product sales to Amazon it actually goes up to eight percent so if you sold something for hundred pound you would pay eight pound in commissions so I got into that product reviews started building links I then added banners with uh, Google AdSense, so they would put banners on your site. If people clicked on those banners, then they would pay a very small fee for each click on the site. So you will have seen the banners that follow around on the internet, or banners promoting certain products. Well, they usually pay either per click or per thousand views, depending on the network. And but quite often it's per click, so it might only be it might be like a penny a click, two pence a click. You know, and but with again with a lot of views and a lot of visitors to our website, you can generate significant uh, revenue through uh, through doing uh, ads on your website, banner ads. Now the trick here is you don't want to actually cover your site with banner ads. You want them in places that they would get seen, and it's actually a lot easier to do that now because I use networks like uh, MediaVine, Zoic and they actually test hundreds of different places on your site, not all at once, but put ads and they work out the best place to show them ads for a better user experience, but also to generate more revenue. And obviously they're obviously trying to direct more potential customers 
to uh, retailers who are paying to have these ads on your site. So this, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I started doing this in about 2015. So I've been doing this for the last five years now and this is mainly how I now make a living. I have a small publishing uh, company. So now we have, uh, we have about four websites. We have one main website which generates the bulk of the revenue. We have smaller websites which are perhaps more passive. I might post an article on them once a month, twice a month, some of them a couple of times a year. My main website, I would say I post on that. I might do around product reviews type articles a couple of times a week and I might do informational content about the same two, three times a week. So a decent amount of content each week goes on that site. That content site now probably gets around, it's actually quite uh, seasonal because it is in the gardening space, my main website, but it gets between 100,000 in winter to 250,000 uh, visitors a month in summer. So yeah, that's what I focus on now. And, uh, and I really love that the freedom it gives you. Now, people call it passive because the work you've done is up there and you're getting paid continuously for it. Ads are being shown on content I wrote 12 months ago, two years ago. So them articles still generate revenue, but to keep growing, you've still got to produce new content. Or I don't personally do link building, link building on my sites, but a lot of content publishers do. They do link building to try and push their pages higher in Google's rankings to generate more traffic that way. I generally go with keeping content updated so that it's fresh in Google's mind. That also helps push it up to the top of the Google search results and publishing more content. Can I just say, if you are finding this story interesting and this information uh, useful, I, was, I would uh, appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so, and click that notification bell so you can get notified when I release new videos like this, perhaps a bit shorter than this video if it's a specific topic. Also, if you could hit that like button again, give it a good smash so, so YouTube knows that you found this video helpful. Back to the story, not long, I promise, this, this video's nearly done now. With these content sites, which is my main business through my publishing company, is we build websites like I've just mentioned where we do roundup product reviews, informational content, how-to guides. Now, I'll just go through a few of the pros with this because I think this is one of the best online business models for making money online. You can do it from anywhere in the world and you don't need much to get started. You can build a WordPress site in a day and you can start publishing content once a week, twice a week, three times a week. But you've got no physical products to deal with, so you don't need no warehousing, no posting. There's no customer service with direct with a customer because you don't have no customers. Uh, like you're referring sales to Amazon, so the customer goes to Amazon for customer service, not you and the same with other retailers. There's no worrying about being priced out of the market. Now, what I mean by this is, when I sold physical products, profit margins, as things got more competitive, shrunk. If you're selling a physical product, you can be totally priced out of the market where you cannot sell that product. So you make, if you can't sell it, you make nothing. You could perhaps sell it, make at a loss and clear out stock, but you make nothing. When you are promoting products, if I promote a product with an 8% commission, if that product is hundred pound, I make I make eight pound commission. But if that product then gets a lot of competition and the price is reduced, say say it even goes down to half, and all of a sudden this product that used to sell for one hundred pound now sells for only fifty pound, which happens quite a lot. And quite often, if you're selling that product directly, you've squeezed out the profit. The profit's gone. But with affiliate marketing, because you're promoting that product, you're also going to make eight percent. So if it's shrunk from 50 to 100, you go from making eight pound to four pound, but you will still make four pound. And if it shrinks again, you'll, you, you, you'll still make money. Whereas you can literally go from making money to making no money. Whereas you, you don't have that same risk again. But if I'm an affiliate, at least I will always make something. I'll always make a percentage of what that item sells for. Again, there's no customer service. It can be done from anywhere in the world, which means that no matter where you live in the world or where you live in the country, anyone can get into 
to uh, publishing content sites. There's actually quite a lot of ways to make money out of content sites. There's affiliate marketing, which I've not, which I've already mentioned. There's having advertising. You can do sponsored posts where a company might pay you to talk and promote their uh, products to your audience and readers. You can sell digital products. So depending on what industry you know, what your content site is about, you might be able to make a course. To me, there is two cons to publishing on uh, websites. The first one is the time it takes. Now, traditionally, I would say that you could start publishing a website and before you start seeing some sort of revenue, and it's usually not a lot, around, usually after around 12 months, you could start seeing some income. But the good thing is, is it like compounds. So if you've been putting content on your site every single week of every single month for a whole year, you can get su sufficient amounts of content on there, whereas it's like a snowball effect and you start earning a bit of revenue and then a bit more and then a bit more and then a bit more. And you can get to a point where you make like £100 one month, then you might make 200 then you might make 400 the next month, then you might get to 800 then it might go up to a grand a month and then you might jump to one and a half grand a month and then you might go to £2,000 a month. And the snowball effect on a content site, it's amazing how it can go from making nothing to within a couple of months, literally making two or three thousand pounds a month. I mean, not all content sites are successful, but the people who keep at it, I, I do believe that they, 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 they can make it work. The only thing about it is, it takes like, I, I would say at least 12 months, which I see is people start it, they do one, two, three months worth, and then they're like, well, this ain't working, I'm getting no traffic, and they forget about the site, they leave it, and they never get going. But what they don't realise is, if they'd kept going for nine, 12 months plus, then that site which they give up could have been making a couple of grand a month passive income from now, and they could have, well, they could leave the day job, and they could be working on that site, and building other content sites, but a lot of people, they just don't ever get there, because they don't give it enough time. Now, I just quickly want to talk about uh, content websites and how I actually grow them. Now, right now, I do the research myself and I do the editing myself and the formatting of the articles, but I don't actually write the articles myself anymore. I use freelance writers, which are on sites like Upwork and other various online sites where freelancers post for work. and. I, I use freelance writers to write the content for for my sites, which is how I'm able to publish a fair bit of content each week. Now, freelance writing is a great way of getting more content on a site and getting started. And I find that when you're finding the content, if, if you're gonna go down the freelance route of finding uh, freelance writers to write your content, I always have them do a couple of test articles paid, but a couple of test articles. And I always have like stipulations where they've got to at least have a keen interest or have worked within the certain industry of that site. So in my example, if it was a gardening site, they would at least have to be keen gardeners or being a gardener or worked in garden centers. They know what they're talking about. Then they, they, they would do research as well because you can't possibly know everything, but they do the research. They know whether what they're reading is correct. So it's like, that doesn't make sense. And they get some really great content and really great writers by doing that. And it also keeps costs low because you don't have to have in-house writers. So what this means is that you could budget, say, a thousand pound a month on having content written. Whereas you couldn't employ an in-house writer for a thousand pound a month unless it was on a part-time basis. But if you're using a freelance writer, they quite often write for a couple of different uh, publishers. So they might write for me, they might write for another site, they might write for another site. So they're able to write for a few sites, earn a relatively decent living doing that. And me as a publisher, I'm able to have a few different writers for different uh, categories and not have to worry about having full-time uh, writers uh, in-house, which, which I think is great and it works really well. I weren't gonna do this, but what I've decided to do is I've recently started a new pet site. So I'm gonna use it on, on YouTube as a, as a case study. Now this website 
it's been built on an expired domain so I'm hoping that will speed up the process of it just so I can show results quicker on YouTube rather than having to wait 12 months before someone watching this now can see see the results that can have now I'm not going to show the exact name of the site until I've got it established a bit because people do tend to they tend to copy you and you know if you've been in this industry you'll know that that's not good so I I will reveal the site but I'm not going to reveal it straight away but I will do quick updates on what I've done on the site how much money it's making how much traffic it's making and I'll do tutorials on how to build the site how to monetize the site how to build tables how to do product research so I'm going to do all that good stuff where it's actually useful and you can follow along and you, you could perhaps try creating your own site so I just wanted to make that aware now before I uh, before this video finishes I've got a couple of a couple of gems still to share but I just wanted to make you aware of that case study now. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. Or if you have any ideas or any content you want to see, I will try and read and reply to uh, all of the comments below. And if you've not already done so, please could you hit the subscribe button if you found this information and video helpful. Click the bell to get notified when I release my next video. And uh, if you haven't already done so, I know it's getting a bit repetitive this, but if you could uh, click the like button, it really does help and I would be much appreciated. Now, that's it for now. If you want to see my next video, then keep a watch out and I'll uh, see what I can publish next. Thanks for watching and goodbye.